Hello, in this video we're going to go over problem A1 from Putnam 1989. The question is this, how many primes among the positive integers written as usual in base 10 are alternating ones and zeros beginning and ending with one? So at this point you may want to pause the video, think about this problem and come back and watch the solution when you are ready. Okay, so the first thing that I do is I will write down a few examples and then see what I can do. So the first one is 1, which is of course not a prime. 101 is a very well known prime, so that is an answer. Now, when it gets larger and larger, it's more difficult to test whether it is a prime or not. A couple of points about that. First of all, the answer to this problem is almost certainly not going to be infinitely many primes. Because if it were to be the case, then we would have to show certain pattern gives us infinitely many primes. And that type of problem is, is usually extremely difficult. Like things, things like primes of the form a, k plus b, where a and b are relatively prime, there are infinitely many of those. That is true, but in fact, it is a very difficult thing to prove. And this one is even much more difficult than that if it were to be true, because you are dealing with very rare numbers. It's not a it's not a uh, an arithmetic sequence. So, let's look at this example and see what we have. And the second thing is. Usually, be, when you are going to do these problems in math competitions, there's going to be a few possible scenarios, and then you have to rule out the, the rest of them. So, let's look at this example. This is 1 plus 100 plus 10,000, 10 to the power of 4. So, I can actually factor this one. I can do difference of cubes. This is 10 to the 6 minus 1 over 10 squared minus 1. And I can write this one down as 10 cubed minus 1 times 10 cubed plus 1 divided by 11 times 9. This is difference of squares at the bottom. Now we can write this one down as 10 cubed minus 1 over 9 times 10 cubed plus 1 over 11. Both of these are integers. This is an integer. This is an integer. And of course, there are both more than one, which means this guy is not is not going to be a prime. So let's look at the general case. If I have one zero one zero one zero and so on, this would be one plus ten squared plus ten to the fourth, all the way to ten to the two n for some positive integer n. This would be ten to the power of two n plus two minus one over ten squared minus one. This is by the formula for a geometric sum. I'm going to factor the numerator, that's 10 to the power of n plus 1 minus 1, 10 to the power of n plus 1 plus 1, divided by 10 minus 1 times 10 plus 1. Now, I know that this won't always be an integer, but this guy is only an integer if n plus 1 is odd. So if n plus 1 is odd, then 10 to the n plus 1 plus 1 over 10 plus 1, this is an integer because I know if I have a to the power of m plus b to the power of m, that would be a plus b times another parenthesis, but this is if m is odd. So in that case, I have written the number as the product of two integers, both of which are more than 1, and therefore the answer is that this is not prime. Let's see what happens when n plus 1 is even. If n plus 1 is even, then 10 to the power of n plus 1 minus 1 over 10 squared minus 1 is in fact an integer. And of course, 10 to the power of n plus 1 plus 1 is also an integer. So in order for this to be prime, the number is prime. That implies 10 to the power of n plus 1 minus 1 over 10 squared minus 1 is 1. And that would give us n is equal to 1. Which would mean the only possibility is 1 or 1. And everything else is not a prime. If you like this video, feel free to check out the rest of the videos on my channel where you can find a lot of videos like this going over problem solving strategies or topics used in problem solving and math competitions. And I will see you in the next video.